So I work for Mademoiselle.com, which yes. is a French website, and yeah. we're really happy uh, to be able to have this interview with you. Thank you. Um, I've seen the movie, and I have to say I loved it, and you gave Did a you? stunning performance in that movie, oh, honestly. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So this is going to be a zero spoiler interview. Okay, good. For yes. everyone watching us, yep. um, we're going to ha have this challenge together, talking about this movie without saying anything about the story. <laughs> Agreed? Yes, because we want people to go on the journey. You know, we don't want it to be about just seeing what happens at the end. It's it's every every we put so much thought into every detail of it, and and it's the whole canvas of this world of of contemporary marriage, contemporary life, the way that the media um, controls us, all of us, the viewer. Um, that It's all of that that we wanted to explore with this film. Yes, exactly. And so anything I ask is only about like the first 10 minutes of the movie. Oh, it is? Yeah, until the disappearance of Amy, because, I mean, after that, we haven't seen anything in the trailer, so complete okay. mystery. Uh, but just like you said, uh, this movie is about marriage. And I read that the, the author of, of Gone Girl, um, Gillian Flynn, said that marriage is the ultimate mystery. What are your thoughts on that quote? Well, she's, she's, Gillian Flynn is, is exploring marriage as a sort of con game, really. It's, it's the idea that, particularly now in the modern age, um, and Gill Gillian articulates it in a way I haven't really seen before, that we're all coached almost to play a version of ourselves or improve upon ourselves for the purpose of attracting a, a mate who very likely is doing exactly the same thing. So possibly when two people get together and, you know, something ignites, it's on false pretenses. And maybe it's a few months or a few years before you really know who the person you're with is. That's obviously not true in every case, but as the culture of narcissism rises and you know, starts ever younger. I mean, you see little children being almost encouraged to develop a narcissistic side of themselves. You know, these kids who go around wearing T-shirts saying, little princess, and I'm the boss, and, you know, well, it, I think we're unwittingly doing that to our children. Um, it becomes more and more prevalent, this. And I mean, it's, she's making a satire on some levels, but it's, it has, and a satire, as we know, usually has truth. Yes, and so the con begins really um, every time we meet someone and we uh, play a role. Um, one of the scenes that uh, I particularly liked, uh, that made me feel quite uneasy as well, is the, the encounter between uh, Nick and Amy that we see in the first flashback, oh. in the first 10 minutes right. of the movie. Um, Tell me why it made you feel uneasy. Um, because really, I can't. I couldn't read her. I couldn't. I couldn't read what what the state of her mind was. That's so true. That's exactly my experience of watching that scene as well, because you know we play that scene and um, we did it a number of different ways because Fincher, you know, likes to explore things. And my experience of shooting that scene was much more sort of girly and flirtatious. And then when I saw the film, I thought, oh wow, you know, he's really, he's really gone for the takes where she's. She's testing him, she's challenging him, she's sort of... It's not just girl meets boy, it's girl checks to see whether boy is suitable, intelligent enough, going to qualify, <laughs> isn't it? It's, 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 it's a test, you know, she's saying, OK, so you answered that question well, let me see how you do with this one. And, and it's interesting that you... Because I had exactly the same experience watching it. Um, Yes, it's a, it's a funny, it's not, it's not your conventional flirtatious uh, pickup scene, is it? Yes. So wh what I found um, terrifying in this movie is how ordinary they both are. I mean, <laughs> it's a married couple, uh, they, they uh, live in the city, they have jobs, and the crisis hits, and they are unspared. Uh, and the problems they have, it's like family, health, and money, which yes, is the three most true. common issues. Um, yes. And so they both lose their jobs. It's they're both print journalists who lose their jobs, and and then Nick loses his mother, and um, and and they have another financial uh, setback as well. So you're you're right. Yeah, they're so ordinary that it's it's so easy to identify with them, which is probably the most terrifying part yeah. of this movie. But I think I spoke. I think it was a French. I can't remember. It was a French journalist who, who I spoke to on the phone who said, "Well, I identify with both Nick and Amy. I sort of see myself in both. I don't know what that says about me." Um, but I, I mean, I think you will have, I think that's what's clever about the writing is that you do, you do feel identification and then 
at a certain point, you know, you want to distance yourself as much as possible. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we encourage <laughs> everyone you. to go see this amazing well, movie. Well, I hope you enjoy it. And, and you know, you go, with a, you go with a date and then leave wondering whether you're with the right person or not. I have a gift for you. It's oh, a what's sticker this? from our website. Oh, I love stickers. Fantastic. Thank you. It'll go on my suitcase. Can you thank read you. it out loud? Yes. Je lis... Oh, je lis Mademoiselle à cheval sur ma licorne. What's like licorne? I don't Unicorn. know. Unicorn. Is it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Ah. Je lis Mademoiselle à cheval sur ma licorne. Okay, perfect. Je comprends maintenant. Your French is amazing. <laughs>